In the previous video, we talked about when we inherit our controller from the controller base class, and when we decorate our controller class with API controller attribute, this makes the controller a Web API controller. In this video, we're going to try to understand routing in controller-based Web API. Basically, how to map a HTTP request to each one of these methods. And by the way, these methods in the controller is called action methods. So the question is, how do we map a HTTP request to these action methods? Let's go to the program.cs and observe what we did for the minimal APIs. What we did was we used the map methods and also we specify the URL. We also, of course, specify the verbs. For controllers, it is very, very similar. But instead of using these map plus verb functions, we use map controllers. So let's delete this. Later, we're going to talk more about minimal APIs. But for now, let's focus on controller-based web API. So instead of using map get, map put, map delete, map post, we're going to use app dot map controllers. Okay. So this will help us to map the HTTP request to controllers. Right. And the second thing in the minimum API is that we specify the URL. So where do we specify the URL in controllers? Let's actually go to the controller class. And here we can use the attribute. And this is called attribute routing. Uh, we can say that we're routing to this URL, shirts, and we're mapping this shirts to this particular action method. And of course, the third thing we also need to specify is the verb. This is a HTTP get. So we covered three things that minimal API covered. First of all, we used map controllers. So this map the HTTP request to our controllers. Secondly, we specify the URL just above the method so that the Web API framework knows that we're going to map this URL to this action method. And then we specify the verb. Right. All those things that we did in the minimal API, we're doing them here just above the method. And then the same thing here for um, the get shirts by ID. This is also a HTTP get, uh, but just different bots. So here, you know, just specify the ID just like in minimal API. And create shirt, we're going to say HTTP post, but the same routes. What about update? We are going to say HTTP put, just like in the minimal API. And of course, the rot is the same as the get shirt by ID. We need to specify which shirt we're updating. And here is the same thing, same rot, uh, but different verb. So here for delete shirt, we're using delete. So we cover all of the endpoints. But there's just one thing we also need to cover. We go back to the program the CS. Now we're saying we're mapping controllers here, right? But mapping controllers is way complicated than mapping to the functions inside minimum API endpoints. Here, the map controllers have some dependent services. Without those dependencies, the map controllers will not work. So where do we register those dependencies into our Web API framework? In the Visual Studio Web API project template, we can see the comments here, add services to container. So we can just do that. Uh, we're going to say builder.services and we're going to say add controllers. Okay. We don't have to add the dependencies one by one manually. Add controllers is a extension method, right? C sharp extension method that is already provided by SP.NET Core. Basically, Add Controllers registers those dependent services in the container for map controllers to use. And then whenever the mapping controllers require those dependent services, ASP.NET Core will create the instances or directly take the instance from the container and then provide those instances to the mapping mechanism. So with all of these changes, pretty simple changes, we are able to make the API work now. So let's actually give it a try. Let's run the web API and let's bring up our Postman. Let's try each endpoint one by one. Let's click on the send and then we're saying reading all shirts. Let's read a shirt, reading shirt number nine. Let's create a shirt. We're not actually creating. 
we're just talking about routing here, right? And then update shirt, updating shirt number 10 and deleting shirt number 11. So all of the endpoints are working in terms of routing. So that's the, actually the first way to rot, right? Basically mapping HTTP requests to action methods in controllers. Another way to do it is to, instead of using the rot on each one of these action method, you can put the rot attribute on top of the controller class, and then we can provide a rotting template here. You're going to say controller, and this is a rot template. This is a placeholder for the name of the controller. In this case, it represents shirts. Therefore, we don't have to use the rot attribute on each one of them and write slash shirts for all of these endpoints. We can actually delete this one, and then we can delete this one. But when we delete this one, where does the ID go? And the ID can go into the HTTP get here. So we can say ID just like this. Same thing here. This one can be deleted because there are no parameters need to be specified. And this one is similar to HTTP get. We're going to specify the ID over here. Now this one is very similar. We're going to delete this and we're going to put the parameter inside here. Okay, now let's try to test this way of doing routing in controller-based web API. Before that, let's add a base URL here. Let's say API slash. So this all of a sudden will change all of the endpoints URL, like the base URL to slash API slash shirts. Right, so uh, let's run it again. And then let's go over here. Now, if I do send a request is going to say 404 because the endpoint completely changed right that's why the original endpoint is not found so in order to make it work we have to say api slash shirts all right let me copy this and then click on the save buttons let's say save and overwrite and then if i click on send now i can see right for the rating one i'm going to get the same thing 404 unless a change that to API slash shirt and click on sending. I'm rating shirt, right? So let's do the same change for all of them. So I'm creating shirt, right? And for update, if I just run it, I'm going to get the 404 not found. Paste, change that to API slash shirts. Now I get my result. Last but not least, we're testing the delete endpoint. Again, we're getting 404. Now we use API slash shirts. Now I get deleting shirt number 11. So now you can see that we can use a raw template on top of the class instead of here. And then the parameters can be just provided through these verb attributes. So those are the two ways you can configure rotting controller based web API. The first way is to use rot on each one of these action methods. And the second way is to provide a rot template on top of the controller and then provide the parameters through the verbs. Okay, that's everything I want to cover in this video. And I'll see you in the next one.